sort of, again, the functional reality of being able to reach, uh, reach uh, the, those standards. Uh, how does this all hang together? You know, managed care is still, uh, will be, you know, the goal of uh, the state is to have everybody basically under managed care. You know of different populations that are moving there. And then, and then to be able to move forward in, as far as really moving towards this uh, 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 outcomes-based and value-based payment uh, uh, system. So what you have here, what we are doing is really looking at um, how do you begin to reduce that gap? Uh, how, what is the, how is the improvement um, measured? And it's really about reducing that gap to goal by 10%. Looking, what will be happening at, by the end of this month is that each PPS will be getting their, their performance benchmarks and then from, and on an annual basis that will be adjusted and looking that at in terms of the actual progress of the PPS around their performance. And you can see in the first part of district, you know, through design, uh, through uh, uh, demonstration year two or calendar year, or the, uh, anyway, the project year two, it is much more based on the process metrics looking at, okay, these are the, the governing structures you need to have in place. Here's the IT elements that you need to have in place. Where is your progress on that? How are you looking at workforce? Um, and what are the meetings and what are your projections around workforce? And, and then as we get out to uh, year three, we're really looking at the performance pieces that should be rolling in. So for instance, for domain two, you know, we'll be looking at, okay, are we seeing that drop in avoidable admissions? You know, um, so that's, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And we, 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 we've talked a lot about payment reform and value-based contracting. I, I think one of the interesting things uh, sitting in, in um, as I've talked more to various audiences, you know, people will come up to me and say, well, how do we get in on this? <laughs> and it's, um, and I, I don't think, and you know, it comes from all different sectors. And I, I think it, it, the idea is that, you know, it's, nobody has a traditional role in, in, in district anymore. It is not about passively receiving anything. It is about demonstrating your value in this healthcare system, and particularly in just as far as approaching a PPS, it is what is your value in helping the PPS meet the project measure, uh, your metric in that measurement uh, that demonstrates value. So everybody is coming to the table as a value partner, uh, you know, whether it's the local Department of Social Services or, 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 or some other sort of non-traditional um, um, you know, player, but you know, that is really the mantra, is that everybody's got to look at this, what role can they play to, to, towards achieving this? And then ultimately, we are look, talking to the managed care plans also about, you know, what are, you know, how to begin to uh, change the structures of these payments. And I, I think what you were hearing before really has to do with what's that flexibility of payment that allows you to get away from the, the visit by visit type of encounter to one where it, it frees you up and frees up those resources to do care the way that is much more effective, uh, that allows you to expand your kind of primary care capacity. And it's not necessarily by adding, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know another you know, 1,500 PCPs uh, to everything which don't exist. Um, and uh, you know, how do you expand that team that was Dr. Singer was talking about you know, this morning? How do you, if you can do things in a different way that doesn't require you to spend 15 minutes just to get a billable visit done and the reimbursement associated with that, but instead it's just part of the population management piece, then these are the things that you know, can be achieved, ideally, through a value-based payment system. So, uh, you know, we've done a lot around, uh, it, it, you know, writing up implementation plans, trying to make sure that there's clinical governance built in, there's milestones to make sure that you all as providers are really have that seat at the table and that this is not an administrative financial executive exercise. It won't happen. It's got to happen with all of you engaged, We're really talking about in provider engagement, wanting to make sure that the people on the front line understand what these projects are because we don't want to wake up at some point as the state uh, or as you as PPS is later to find out, oh, we didn't hit that benchmark. So one of the key things that is um, really uh, different about, uh, about DISTRIP also is that there are statewide benchmarks that must be met. That depends on everybody. Um, 
being able to collectively contribute to that. So it, it doesn't matter if Binghamton is doing great um, because, uh, or, or, but because if Buffalo is, is a, and the Bronx are not quite you know, meeting those benchmarks, even though you know, Binghamton and um, uh, uh, the Adirondacks are, are, are doing well, it will, if we don't meet those benchmarks, everybody has, uh, uh, the state will get payment uh, taken away by CMS, and we will have to do that uniformly across the PPSs. So this is a, this is really, we are in this as a statewide collective effort. Um, and you know, one of the things that we will be doing is doing a lot of uh, review and intensive monitoring because we all we want to make sure that everybody uh, is able to hit the benchmarks uh, so that we can all benefit and keep on going with these uh, incentive payments. So um, here is just a you know a slide around. Uh, you know, I talked about the value-based payment. A lot, we are exploring lots of different ways. You know, instead of again being you know episodic based, we are looking more towards that the holistic and continuous. Uh, kind of, you know, type of payment uh, structure. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to, I was saying to Foster and other people is that I felt like my whole presentation got tossed out the window by listening to everybody. But to, but to kind of go back, one of the th themes I, I heard here that I wanted to just share with you is, you know, on workforce. That is such a dominant an important piece that's just percolating throughout the state, especially you know, as we went through four days of um, uh, district uh, project oversight uh, uh, panel hearings, we kind of heard the 25 PPSs present, and we looked at the workforce numbers. And I just wanted to share with you, I mean, because you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate this. For the anticipate, each PPS was asked to project what they would need for workforce. Um, so the number of PCPs that they, uh, in total, uh, that was felt that each, uh, that the PPSs uh, collectively asked for, uh, thought they needed, were 1,524. Um, nurse practitioners, 3,000 3, nurse practitioners. Uh, behavioral health care managers, 4,744. Social workers, 2,184. Other was 9,500 people. And the other category really had to do with you sort of in that care coordinator, community health worker, navigator, that realm of, uh, of personnel. So where would these people be coming from? I mean, one of the things about DISTRIP is the idea is that you know, with the reduction in avoidable uh, admissions, you are going to see this, this shift we should be seeing the shift in terms of inpatient capacity and the staffing and, and workforce that's part of it, shift to, we, we need to, re to redeploy those people to the outpatient side. But meantime, we do have you know, these provider needs. And I, I think what district offers, again, is while it offers those challenges, it offers, also offers opportunities. And I, I think workforce of, is a really important and exciting thing, and it really needs to be, again, a local, Discussion, a local, re you know, a regional plan, um, and you know it's just really interesting. Think about it. If you're in New York City, you know there are 11 PPSs covering New York City, um, and how do they all get together and talk about their workforce and what kinds of, of redeployment or retraining or you know how do you tap that that pool? If you're sitting up in again the Adirondacks, you know where you don't have people a lot of people, and you've you got a very large geographic area, but meantime you've got high unemployment and really uh, poor health status. You know, it's just interesting to think about what can you do here? I mean, can you, you know, my, my fantasy was just listening to this was more about, boy, could you take the people who, take some people and have them really get them empowered unto themselves around taking care of their own health care and make them community health workers and go out and empower the rest of the community and pay for them for it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of other things going on around peer credentialing. Um, I think we've seen a lot of peer credentialing, you know, within the AIDS Institute, OMH. And how do you take those now and kind of expand that idea? So I think we're seeing it as there's just so, so much potential here. And I, I think these are the local conversations that we look forward to, you know, uh, to, to hearing about in your areas because I think it really is something that can really uh, assist in that system transformation. Um, 
you know, similar discussions around IT, how do we get those pipes connected and talk? I know you all have been struggling. Each Rio is different. Uh, what's the plan around the shiny? Meantime, we have very stringent um, milestones in order for a, a PPS to successfully do population health management. So those are all the things that are in play. Um, and uh, I just want to, I just again, as in your roles as providers, to make sure that you're at the table. I'd go back to Dr. Singer's original uh, presentation, which was fantastic. You know, just empower those around you, be at the table, and because without you, it can't happen. Okay. So uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>